Hello and welcome to Mr. Clark After Dark, everyone. My name is Lucas Clark and I am a certified educator with Alberta Education and the Alberta Teachers Association. All conversations and interactions exchange is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. In no way does the content discussed intend to be in violation of the ATA Code of Conduct or meant to target any individual student, teacher, or to belittle or demean the profession in any way. If you have something that you would like me to discuss or have a story of your own to share, please reach out at lucasrdclark97 at gmail.com. You can also send a direct message to me on Instagram at Mr. Clark After Dark. Hope you enjoy the show and please do not forget to subscribe. And now on to the show. Hope you all enjoy. Hello again, friends. My guest today is Thomas Wickens. He is a physics and chemistry teacher who has been in and out of the profession for just over a decade. On part one of the episode, Wickens and I discuss his chemistry master's program working on cancer research at Dalhousie, his first teaching gig at an all-girls school in England, his jobs working as a professional protein powder taster for supplement quality control, as well as working for a cigarette testing factory. Also, how the teaching itch was always in the back of his mind, restarting his teaching career as a junior high humanities teacher, bringing in a slightly different dynamic as actually being someone who was employed in the oil stands, well-paying job, and going into a teaching interview situation, uh, actually having some leverage. And last but not least, SLAD Cloud Classroom Management. That's SAD Cloud classroom management, and obviously much more. Thank you guys very much for tuning in and hope you enjoy. As you're going. (laughs) All right, Mr. Wickens. Thank you for coming on, sir. How's it going? Good. How are you this morning? Oh, good, man. Good. So I want to pop right into it. Okay. Why be a teacher? Why be a teacher? Why be a teacher? No, well, I've heard, I was listening to another podcast recently where essentially it was saying teachers go into teaching because they don't know what else to do. So do you agree with that? Like, what do you think? I think that's probably the wrong reason to go into teaching. (laughs) Yeah. If you're Um, true, if that is your reason for going into teaching, it's probably not the best, but. I, uh, I did, I've tried a lot of different things Mm -hmm. and I like teaching, I guess is that's why I went into teaching. Um, when I was in high school, I was like tutoring lots of friends Okay. and like a couple like younger siblings of friends. Mm -hmm. Um, and I enjoyed that. And then at the end of high school, I kind of was at a crossroads. I was Mm -hmm. like, do I want to go into the trades or do I want to go to university and like pursue like probably teaching, but, or just like pursue academia kind of thing. Yeah. And I just decided, I was like, well, if I go, if I don't go to university now, I might lose a lot of the skills that. True. Are learning, so I'd rather go try that now and then. So, so this is a. I love that you said that actually because I always find that everyone's saying you're trying to build the students' skills. Like, what do you mean by skills in terms of what do you think you would have lost by not going to university? The capacity to like probably some work habits would I'd have yeah. to like relearn like habit work part. habits. Yep. Um just like in grade 12 and then like university you're like learning a high amount of content yeah all at once which i don't think you ever have to do again Mm -hmm. in like or most people most most careers you don't have to do that like high level of like content absorption and like learning um and yeah just like it was and like that's talking to like adults too when you're a kid you're like oh i'm thinking of this or this and they're like well why don't you go to university first because it's like it's easy to go back to college. It's yes. going to be easier to go back to college and do it something else, like mm-hmm. potentially an easier path. Yeah. So what else, what other things have you done other than teaching, like since essentially finishing university? Okay. Yeah. I, a, you've told me a couple is, times. <laughs> this is a long. This is a long. Just story. go for it. All right. Go so finish university. Um, wasn't really sure what to do because like. So what did you study in university? I did uh, switch that a bunch of times. Okay. (laughs) So why did you switch? Like, what did you switch from? I started in science and business, like a core program at UW. 
um, University of Waterloo. Yeah. And uh, did not like the business. Didn't like the profs, didn't like the content. Yeah. Immediately switched out of, uh, of that pretty much like two weeks in and just into general science because I didn't know what avenue to go down. Yeah. It was just taking all the chemistry courses anyways. So in yeah. my third year, I switched into uh, chemistry. So I had to like make up a lot of lost time. So I had like pretty heavy course load my last two years um, to graduate on time. But so uh, you did five years of a university or four? Just four. I didn't do four. co-op. I switched out of co-op, okay. which like hindsight, I wish I had have just like stayed in co-op and been more decisive. I mm -hmm. feel like that would give me a lot, taught me a lot of the lessons that I learned after university. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I like wasn't sure, I like TA'd a little bit in university, um, really enjoyed that. And then to so getting a taste of it, kind getting of, a taste yeah. of it. Um, and then after university, I started a master's at uh, Dalhousie. In what? Chemistry. Okay. I was doing like research on like organic compounds for potential like cancer drug applications. Okay. Wow. Which it was like pretty cool. But uh, the lab I was in, I just didn't feel safe in the lab. Oh, okay. I was the only yeah. grad student. There was like broken equipment didn't feel supported by my like su like uh professor i guess mm -hmm. so do you think if that experience would have been different yeah that you probably been. would have stayed in that room finished or? the i might be a teacher still but i would have if it had been a bit different experience i definitely would have finished the masters okay um and then after that came back and was like well i don't know what i'm gonna do so i guess i'll like I'm going to apply to teacher's college because that was the original plan. Mm -hmm. And like this master's thing, again, the master's thing was like, I just finished this high level learning. And yeah. If I'm going to keep high level learning, I might as well do it now. Yes. Fair enough. While it's still the most fresh, but yeah. yeah. Um, so then applied to teacher's college and while I waited, cause I came back from uh, the master's like Thanksgiving. So like really early on, mm -hmm. um, like got a job at a analytical company that tested cigarettes Okay. <laughs> uh, which was which was interesting in the sense that it was like chemistry, but it was like kind of like a factory job. Mm -hmm. But I got to see what the higher level like uh chemist did. And that was like mostly you didn't need a master's to do what they were doing or just like spend like work there a long time. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, then went to teachers college. And how long were you in that like factory that was cigarettes job? Literally probably like eight months okay. like from like Christmas. Still, that's not like a small amount of time. Yeah. That's pretty significant. But yeah, it was like Christmas to like August the next year before teacher's college started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Went to teacher's college. Then like immediately from there, tried to get onto like the supply list where I lived at yeah. uh, Waterloo, but super high demand for teachers didn't end up getting on the supply list, but really wanted to teach. Like didn't want to like go do something else. Mm -hmm. So ended up going to England to teach for a year. Yeah. So how did that come about? England needs to, needed. I don't know if they still do, but yeah. they like really needed teachers. There's like high recruiting, um, to go teach in England. So you get a visa pretty easily. And then, um, you went and I just like went with an agency. So oh, okay. the school paid the agency and the agency paid me essentially to be a sub. Hmm. But so you got paid to be a sub in I, England. My, so my pay was like sub pay. Yeah, I guess. And then, um, but I was like teaching classes. So okay. I was teaching like grade seven science, grade nine science, grade ten science, chemistry. Um, the only thing I wasn't teaching was grade eights. So. Okay, so obviously you grow up in Waterloo, K to twelve, same area, all in Ontario, I assume. Uh, moved around a bunch when I was a kid, so like. But yeah, school, grew up, like, my dad's side of the family is from, like, rural Ontario. Yeah. So we lived in a really small town called mm -hmm. Feversham for a while. Feversham. 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 Like <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and, like, my dad still lives, like, 20 minutes from there. And, like, my grandparents live, like, 10 minutes from there. Um, so I went to, like, bust into a school yeah. there. And then um, I guess also went to another small school in that area. Like, moved around a bunch as a kid and mm -hmm. then finished, like, grade seven to 12 in Waterloo. Okay. So how different were the norms between a school in Ontario versus a school in England where you were teaching? Like were the expect, was it pretty much the same kind of just, I, yeah, I would say it was this, it, it was different, but the same, like I'd never taught, I've never taught in a school in Ontario, in Ontario or Canada that required 
um, uniforms. There are obviously yeah. some, but the school I taught at in England was like uniforms. It was an all girls school, which we don't have here. Mm -hmm. um, but kids are kids. Yeah. At the end of the and day. What year was this that you were teaching in England? Uh, 2012. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have to like You're go back a, and maybe 2013. Now. Okay. Yeah. No, definitely 2012. Yeah. 2012 to 2013. Okay. Yeah. And then, so how long are you in England for? One year. One year. Yeah. And then you finished the year out. What happened at the end of your first year? How does that kind of work with your moving with the agency? And that was like a one year term and you're kind of trying to renew or like kind of what's, what are you looking so for? You, there? Yeah. You can like re up or you could like, uh, yeah, so you can re up with them. You might get hired, hired directly by the school. Okay. I have a few like Canadian friends who now live in England who like teach there full time. Okay. Like they met someone or they just like really loved it over there or yeah. no number of different things. Uh, I just, decided I was going to come back to Canada. Um, lots of the things I like to do at the time are very hard to do in England, like hockey and like, yeah, that's true. Definitely like, like a climate. different culture, especially yeah. if you're like from Ontario and you like yeah. essentially are your traditional quote unquote Canadian yeah, person. I'm a pretty but... typical Canadian white dude. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so where do you go after England back to Canada? Where do you end up? Parents place. Parents uh, place. All right. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> One year in. Yeah. Yeah. And then kind of like was still on the go teach train and yeah. I got an offer to teach in Ghana. Didn't go to Ghana. Okay. I bailed like last minute. Yeah. Um, just didn't feel right. Yeah. Kind of found out what they said they were going to pay me wasn't actually what I was getting paid. Yeah. And like just, yeah, so, some things it was like really quick turnaround and like after like dwelling on it or like and like reflecting i was like it's yeah. probably not the right choice mm -hmm. um so yeah, then ended up getting a job at a uh quality assurance for like a protein company okay so like they mixed like whey protein that you'd eat yeah um, okay to, to get to get bulk so that my job was like i had to double count things or i had to like taste test sometimes which was like <laughs> interesting <laughs> a general um, scientist degree yeah. to protein powder yeah. taste tester does this taste like all the ingredients are in it uh yeah i guess um that makes me feel very comfortable about the supplements that we're all taking <laughs> yeah um so how long are you at that job for probably like i don't i don't know six months maybe okay like not a long time so like, it's essentially post university, you're kind of just taking gigs. Like you're kind of looking one yeah. place at a time. Yeah. It's it's like one of those things that I was just always told. Like if you have on your resume, if you have a big blank spot, yeah. Like even I had some money saved up, but if you have like a big blank spot in your resume, um, that's not usually a good. It's time a red to flag. Employers. Yep. Um, so how did that even come about? Like how do you just go from teacher in England? Like how did they, did you just apply for this online? Like how did you even find out about a quality assurance supplement? tasting oh, job that job was yeah. just yeah online like just online what was like monster.ca was that, was that, <laughs> i think that was the the website or, or like careers or something like that <laughs> just like go online chemistry type in chemistry job or like yeah. science job or quality okay. yeah. assurance um quality yeah. assurance testing. the okay. cigarette job i got i got because one of my friends had got a job there and they're like oh, oh they're okay. hiring oh, okay or like that handy resume for you yeah. um Let's see. Then post quality assurance. Where next is that? When you kind of get to Fort McMurray. Fort McMurray? Yeah. All right. So Not teaching though. Okay. Yes. Cause so go into that. So um, again, like teacher landscape in Ontario. Yeah. T terrible, mm -hmm. basically. Um, but I assume it wouldn't have been here even then when you no. came here. So why not teaching right away? If like teaching kind of was the plan, like what was the thinking about just trying to move somewhere and try to start something? But it was. It was again like I was like, okay, I need need like a career which wasn't yeah. tasting protein <laughs> um and wasn't really like i wasn't certified to teach in alberta at the time like i had to okay. jump through those hoops yeah it is a lot to like get those um, even if you're already certified to go across province or whatever but yeah, yeah. so yeah my one of my friends is an engineer works he works for suncor and he he said hey like this contract company i work with this is what they do. They're like looking to hire some people in Fort McMurray and you might be interested. So he was like, I was like, okay, I might as well apply. Like, so was this like chemistry related or was this just yeah, the job? Chemistry that kind related. Of, okay. It's like chemical, uh, a chemical sales and technical service company. Okay. 
Um, oh, I guess the other thing I was doing well, I was like interviewing because mm-hmm. it was like, it ended up being seven interviews because it's normally like a three or four interview process. Yep. But like I interviewed for one job and then they're like, we actually might hire you for this other job. So I had to redo the whole process. Oh, nice. Fun. But while I was doing that, that was like a five month thing. Like I started the interview process, I think in March or April. Okay. And I started working here in September that year. So it was like a long oh, wow. time. So during that time, I was like getting my visa. I was doing like all the paperwork to go so, teach in Australia. Okay. Um, I was like, I could do that, mm-hmm. but uh, really expensive. So like, I was like, uh, in September, I got the job offer. I was like, okay, I go teach in Australia. So you went to teach in Australia? No, I could go teach okay. in Australia. Yes. Okay. Or I can go to Fort McMurray and make bank. Yes. Like, yeah. And I was yeah. like, well, I might as well try this thing. I really liked um like my boss at my old company, like all the management, all the people at my old company, like really good people, yep. um, really easy to work with those people. So yep. um, it was easier to go to like do something where I knew I would be working with good people in a, like maybe an environment I wasn't comfortable in as opposed yeah. to going and working like overseas again. Yeah, a complete new change again. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that was like one challenge in England was like a lot I was like a super young teacher at the time mm-hmm. and all the teachers at my school were like not in the same phase of life. So like yeah. it was really hard to find social things to do outside of school. Like yeah. I had to work really well, hard. Especially if the sports and kind of the recreational stuff that you do is yeah. not really available and if no one else is playing it. So what did you kind of, kind of stepping back a little bit, what did you kind of learn about teaching in your first year in England? Like what was kind of the... What was the starting versus end of your adjustment for you as like how you identify yourself as a teacher and what teacher you want to be? It was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But I would say... But like, was there any change? Like, was it still just kind of like survival? You figured out it's kind of a job and you're just... 100%. 100%. So what do you mean by survival? I was teaching like eight different courses. Mm -hmm. They had a a bi, like a fortnightly, bi-weekly schedule. So like... Um, they had a what? Bi-weekly schedule. Like, you okay. know how we have a five-day schedule? Yes. Oh, okay. Here? That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. There's, it was like a 10-day schedule. Hmm. Um, Did you like that? No. No? Okay. <laughs> too, I, almost too much variation? Yeah, it was like yeah. too much variation. Some classes I only saw like once. At, like, if it worked out, I might see them like once in a two-week schedule or like twice wow. in a two-week. It just, yeah. I, didn't feel, I didn't feel like there was a consistent There's enough. no routine. Yeah. 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 Um, which it's it's like I yeah. guess it's okay. It can be good to a certain but to a certain extent clearly. Yeah. yeah. You're like here's a whole bunch of homework cuz I'm mm. not going to see you for like five <laughs> um but yeah like I would yeah, it was definitely just survival. I was trying to figure out what te- kind of teacher I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So what do you mean by like like what are the kind of teachers that there are and like what was the one you wanted to be? Like what like you know what I mean? Like, cuz I, I can kind of think of the like, are you the is it you referring to like a strict versus chill or like I'm, I definitely know like my personality type. I can't mm-hmm. be too strict. I'm definitely more chill. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard stories. So. Yeah, I know. Um, I don't want to. <laughs> Most of what you heard is probably true. But anyway, go on. <laughs> so yeah, just trying to figure out like you're trying not to veer too far away from your personality type. Yeah. Because that's really draining. Like during my practicum, I had one of my practicum instructors. Um, I, I guess this is better. Like, so during my practicum, I had two practicum mentors at one school Okay. and they wanted, both wanted me to teach differently. So what do you so, mean by differently? So one of them was like, you should have like your lessons basically scripted. Um, so you don't miss anything. Um, and the other one was like, you should be like more casual and like off the cuff and like yeah. learn to like deal with that kind of thing Mm -hmm. and that's definitely more my style Mm -hmm. um i get really stressed out when i I script something and then i miss something um and basically the person who's like just be more casual if you like if you miss something just you can cover it again the next day or like um, yeah nothing in this business is fatal that's my one of my, fa- one of my favorite <laughs> yeah. sayings about education is that you know what if you gloss over a concept you always see them at least once every two weeks but usually within the same week you'll see the same class it's really not end of the world territory if you skim something but i'm the exact same way going into my practicum which was obviously here at our school i 
have never felt so stressed in my life coming into this practicum. And it wasn't necessarily that I didn't really know who I wanted to be. It was, I felt that every minute had to be planned and scripted or else I would look like an idiot. And then I had this like crazy imposter syndrome that I'm stupid. I'm not the person who should be at the front of this room delivering knowledge to, I mean, grade eights. But so have you ever had like the imposter feeling or did you kind of have it in England and then not here or kind of how was that? I wouldn't say I had like, I feel like I have enough experience and like. Because you had a pretty to- solid grounding in the information you were teaching. Yeah. It's not like you were asked to teach like English and then it's like you, like I you have this first kit. year here. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah talk, <laughs> okay, talk. we'll get to that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. well, that's fair. In your first Having, year, you have a, a comfortable yeah, like, yeah, yeah. environment, especially but. like being like fresh out of like still being pretty fresh out of university. Like mm. the chemistry I was doing in university, I could like do high school chemistry with my eyes closed. Yeah, um, and like knew a lot more than yes. the students needed to know. It was more like I guess one of the the foundations for like if I can do every, if I could make every lesson the way I would want to make it, it was like every lesson would be like fun and engaging. Yeah. Because like I, I like science, but I know that some people don't like science or like it can be dry, Yeah. but there's always like those like memorable lessons that are yeah. fun. So I like always try to be like, I try to like bring humor into the classroom, like yeah. encourage the kids to like have fun. So like my, my struggle was always with like, man, I'm, I'm bored. Like yeah. I'm bored right now. So mm-hmm. the kids have got to be bored right now, especially like if it's a topic you're teaching or a course you're teaching for the first time. Um, yeah, Cause when you're teaching it for the first time, it's almost, you're automatically back to survival a little bit in terms of you're kind of just moving from day to day, figuring out what to do. You don't really have the time to think about how to yeah. be creative in this delivery. But. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be creative and like get the subject matter across because you can go and like backwards design or you can you can try to think where the kids are going to have problems, but you don't know. So what does backwards design mean? Backwards design, just yeah. like have an end goal in mind, yeah. your outcomes in mind, and then work backwards. What problems are students going to ask or like what questions are you? And then just try to like answer those questions as you design the yeah. lesson and like with the assessment and stuff in mm-hmm. mind. But yeah. uh, in sales, you call it the Ben Duffy approach. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you were in sales. <laughs> I was in sales for a bit. Um, but uh, yeah. So when you do that, you're like, well, let's, am I right? Mm-hmm. The first time around, you're like, am I right? And if you're right, then you can go back and like, make it more engaging or add some activities. What do you mean by am I right? Like was was my backwards design correct? Did I did I cover the right bases? Mm-hmm. Usually you're not right. You like think that there's something that's super obvious or common sense and half the class just like looks at you yeah. like you just spoke to them in a foreign language. Well, I, I 100% agree because I almost find that is essentially what made my imposter feeling go away was the first time, first practicum, English 30-1. So I don't really have an, I have a kind of an English background. Um, But the first essay we write, the submissions that I got were just dumpster fires. Like it was just a paragraph. (laughs) But then I, in my mind, I said, okay, I have something now to offer them. So that was kind of the first time where I actually felt, I remember my mental teacher laughed at me. So I actually asked to mark the essays for her because she didn't expect that at all. And well, I said, this is the one place where I find I can contribute. So I found like once you kind of had that as a, I'm not totally stupid. I'll probably usually be wrong still in the first couple of years. I still feel like that probably almost every day. I mean, I'm not that far into it. But yeah, I find once you found that you had something to offer, it was, that's what kind of made the feeling go away. So now that you have done your, say, before we go into you teaching physics and chem here now, you get to Fort McMurray, you get into your chemical sales job. How long are you in that gig for? Five, four and a half years. See, so there for like four sep- and a half years. So September 2014 to like basically, I guess four years, September 2018. Okay, so I guess my question would be teaching's always in the back of your mind. 
you already have some teaching experience from going to England. Why four and a half years? Like, what did you like about it that kind of kept you there? Uh, the people. Yeah. I like some, like some of the work was really engaging and interesting. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of the work that was like pretty routine. And what was your shift like? Like, what was your was schedule? Like five and two. Like, uh, okay. I was so just, like a Monday to Friday yeah, still? Okay. A lot of driving, like driving out to site, like yeah. daily basis. Um, pretty much like always like have your phone on call in case there's a problem. Yeah. Um, which I didn't like super mind. It just became like teaching was always in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, what about teaching was like, what would you think of when it was in the back of your mind? Just like the, like I had a good experience with the students in England. Um, had a, I like remembered the good times I had like TAing and like was always kind of the plan to pursue it. And I didn't really ever give it a fair shot. Like a year is not really yeah. a fair shot. I didn't hate it either when I gave it the, the year and I didn't hate it um, where I was, but I was just at the point where I was like, all right, to do what I really want to do with this company, I need to like wait 10 to 15 years. But before I have enough experience in like um, technical knowledge to, to be in a position where I will be like, I don't have to do a lot of like the mundane tasks, yeah. which is, which is fair. Yeah. Like, um, it's like a rite of passage kind of thing. And I'm but. like teaching. I'm like, I'm, I hate marking. And there's <laughs> definitely parts of teaching I don't like, Yes, but um, if I'm like, if I'm going to go back and give teaching a shot, mm -hmm. I need to do it before my roots here, are like too deep. Um, yeah, like if you, if you have a 10 to 15 year process to get to that point, like four years yeah. is still pretty and, like new, right? Yeah. And, and it was, it was too, it was like, I just kept thinking about teaching. Like I'd be driving, driving like an hour a day and I'd be like, man, like, should I go back to teach? Like there's a lot of like, so what did you picture yourself doing when you would think about teaching? Like when you thought of what teaching was, like, what was the idea of teaching in your mind? It changed like a lot working at Nalco to which it probably has like molded some of my like foundational things that I do in class. Like what? Um, unfortunately, kids, 90% of what you learn in a high school science class, you do not need for your career. Yep. Right. So. So is it kind of a thing where most of the science that you now teach at the high school level is it almost like if I take biochem and physics 2030. Is it kind of just you'll use different pieces for different careers, but you'll never actually use all of it for everything? Is that kind of like the thing or is a lot of it kind of mundane? Uh, a lot of it, like my chemical sales job, mm -hmm. I would say use like third and I would say 75% of grade 11 chemistry, but like grade 12 chemistry, not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but so with that in mind, I try to use the content because a, they're going to need it for university. Like they're going to build on it. If they yeah. go to university, the courses I teach, most of the kids are planning on going to post-secondary. Um, so that's like, you need to know the content for that. So but, I, mean, I guess that's kind of the pushback of is essentially the way it's currently structured, the right way to progress them. And when you're thinking about it as a general kind of introduction to the subject, I I haven't got into like the curriculum or mm. like whatever, if you're saying that. Well, I'm just, I guess I'm just wondering because there's always a talk of like, let's rewrite the curriculums. Like, are you a fan of the way it's kind of progressed or is it oh, the way it I scaffolds think, or? I think for the most part, most of the science courses, the curriculum is good. Okay. Based on like, and like some people who go on to like academia will need all the stuff that they learn. Yeah. Um, or a lot of it, but just with, doing like a job where I made very, had a very good income. Yep. Um, it was a very technical job. I learned lots of the stuff as I like the stuff I needed to know there. I learned there. Mm -hmm. Um, but using the curriculum as a vehicle to teach, uh, like what do you skills. mean by the word vehicle? I like that curriculum as a vehicle. So like you have all this content, but like there's more important, like there's skills that you learn in school, like you're learning in school and like learning is a skill. So, okay, we're going to use the curriculum to look at for like chemistry. It's a lot of like problem solving. Like you read a problem or you have a problem. Okay. What is this problem asking? What do I know? 
What are ways I could solve this problem? And then like applying that process. So it's like the process thinking is kind of yeah. one of the main things you're trying to drive home essentially. Yeah. And, but drive home, no yeah. pun intended with the vehicle. Yeah, 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 there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like chemistry, especially is like methodology and process oriented, I would say. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, it's, it's like a requirement for like software engineering, I think in a couple mm -hmm. universities for that reason. Um, and then just also just the process of like a critical thinking. Um, so I like to make my students' lives like a little bit miserable. Like if they come yep. ask me how to do this, I usually say, what have you tried? Like, have you tried it? Or like, I usually answer their questions. Like getting them questions. to, well, you're trying yeah. to get them to diagnose the problem themselves, which is yeah. literally what you're trying to do in almost every career ever, yeah. right? And then hopefully that leads them to be able to like critical think, even about news and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then just the process of science. Like, okay, again, like if you have a problem in life, like, what is the problem? How do you think you could fix it? Okay, try try one thing. If that one thing doesn't work, try something else. Like encouraging like, failure through trial yeah, and error. Yeah, failure and reflection, right? Yeah. Um, I guess failure, evaluation, and reflection. Yeah. Um, so that's I I really try to like push those kind of skills because I think they a help you become like a good life learner. Yeah. B like prepare you for a lot more than if I just stand up and like lecture the content. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And see, it's fun to watch like little, like the, it's fun to see like the light bulbs go off after they get really mad at you. Mm -hmm. Like I've had students be really frustrated with me. And then like the next day they're like, I finally get it. And you're like, yeah, you, I knew you would get it, but it was, uh, you're fun. kind of putting them through the ringer yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So you're, Four, four and a half years into Nalco. That's the name of the company that you're with. I was assume. Nalco champion at the time. Okay. Owned by Equab. Great name. Great now, name. They're, now they're champion X, which might be a better <laughs> name. <laughs> it's incredible. I feel like I want that sweater yeah, right now. Yeah, they've got some but... really nice hats. Hey, I'm not scared if you got some extra ones. But um, so I guess why is it year five, essentially? that you make the decision to go to teach, not year three, not year two. What happens in year five where you're like, okay, this is the time to do it? Well, I, I think it was like, again, like I, I feel like if there was different scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you mean? So like I came to Format kind of like at the end of the boom. Mm -hmm. Companies were like really tightening up budgets and at the end of the day, we're a chemical sales company. Mm -hmm. We're trying to sell more chemicals or yeah. like, apply our programs opposed to competitors programs and i would say not like they probably have better like service or we we offered it was usually a bit higher price mm -hmm. but we tried to like offer a better service okay. um and because of like kind of money crunching and stuff it was discouraging putting lots of effort into proposals or like trying to get things that would probably used to you would you, usually be able to do but now you could and, and yeah now companies would just be like sorry like the other guys are cheaper even though you pro provided this like we're gonna save a lot of money or this so like to me like i think if i had, had some more success in the sales i'm not a sales guy hmm. by trade but i think i like and i don't feel like a sales person yeah, yeah really but um i think if i had, had some more success there it might have maybe i wouldn't have been thinking about like, is this right for me? Or like, do I want to yeah. teach? So that might've been a bit of circumstantial stuff. But uh, like I said, like when you drive an hour a day, like, or I guess an hour to work and an hour from work every day, you get a lot of time to think, even if you got music on or a podcast on. Yeah. And so like when your mind wanders, like, yeah. I almost find my mind wanders more when I have either a podcast yeah, or like, music. Things will just start like popping into your head yeah. out of nowhere, like the little, yeah. But, uh, and then you're like, what was I just listening to? <laughs> um, Where did those eight minutes go? Yeah. yeah. But I, I think that like n not transitioning back to teaching, that's the only thing I can think that could have changed to not maybe make me think about it as much if I had had a bit more success in parts of the company. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, when I, I, I think I was like making strides in the company in my like last six months, there, I was like learning a lot more even when I like gave my notice and said, Hey, I'm, I'm going to go try and teach. Like my managers were like, oh, really? Like you've, you've shown like a lot of like growth. And I was like, sorry, but I like need to do this or else I'm, I just get more bitter. Probably. No, I love the, so I like that. I like the, 
the need to try or else you'll be bitter. I find that's a, a key thing. So you finally make the decision. You keep your kind of foot on the gas thing with our vehicle analogy here. Uh, <laughs> getting back into teaching. When do you start? Where do you start? And what are you teaching? And what is that like? Back, like back after into Nyako? teaching. Yeah. So um, ended up teaching, taking over a mat leave at McTavish, okay. teaching grade seven uh, social studies and English <laughs> and grade eight English uh, with the expectation like the high school is opening the next year uh, and okay. having uh, conversations with like admin being like, yeah. you will like, you'll be assuming you don't suck. Yeah. Uh, you'll be in the, uh, the high school the next year. Mm -hmm. And I guess another, I guess a big reason for coming to teaching was like, did the interview process here? Yeah. I was like, I would love to work for the admin here. Like, yes. Yeah. Um, they were great at the time. Yeah. So, and, and they uh, still, I guess they still, yeah, not still at the are. time, <laughs> still, still are. Great at the time. Um, but no, definitely like <laughs> nice I feel, my interview when they're interviewing yeah. me, I was also interviewing them. Like, yeah. do I want to leave my job to go? That to is fair. Cause honestly, it's very rare for a teacher essentially to have leverage. Yeah. Really. You know what I mean? Cause you're kind of saying, essentially what is their sales pitch is because usually never it's always like please sir can i have a job here i need employment <laughs> i only have my ed degree like there really isn't another option so <laughs> what was teaching grade seven social and english like after essentially almost having no interaction with that kind of discipline for probably since your grade 12 year um <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to think how I can spin this in a positive way. It well, wasn't no, great. honestly, well, what were the negatives? Like, what was the hard part adjusting back? Because even in England, you taught like high school seven, science, yeah. but it was like it was different, similar age level, but the 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 subject you were most comfortable with. So, yeah. how was that different here? So, like, I seven socials like Canadian history, yeah. and I would say I'm pretty comfortable with that too. Yes, fair enough. But in English, grade seven and eight English hopefully I can do grade seven and eight English yeah. as a high school teacher. Um, and the staff here, like awesome for sharing resources yeah. and like answering my questions. Um, the, so the content wasn't my issue. It was the classroom management part of it. Um, cause I have taught for like a full year before, mm -hmm. but coming into a class where they had two weeks of like a supply teacher because their teacher had went out so what day that. did you start like was it like what month was it <sighs> roughly for a map november okay so how why was it so now i'm a little bit curious because you're still working with nalco because you're not really taking the okay it's march i'm gonna start in september like when did, like did you were you just applying and didn't I, get I hired applied, at first or I, yeah i applied in in the summer and then interviewed like in the summer and then i'm just trying to remember all the sequence of events yeah, yeah. and like stuff yeah. But basically, they just had LTOs at the time, like or not an LTO, long term occasional. Okay, yeah, I don't yeah, know if that's what yeah. it is called here. It's that's yeah. what Ontario. I haven't yeah. learned all, like that's some fine. of my term are yeah. Ontario slash a long term terms. leave essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the admin's viewpoint was like, well, he probably doesn't want to leave his full time job to come for potentially only a year. So I followed up in like mid September or October, and. They were like, well, we might have something. We'll let you know. And, and they like told me we didn't didn't call you back because what we had starting in September was just like. It uh, always takes like some a, time to yeah, like really temporary. see what all the openings are. Yeah. Fair yeah. Enough. And they were like, we didn't know if you'd want to leave or not. And I was like, no, I like would like to pursue teaching again. Yeah. And so they called me and they're like, so we actually have a spot if you'd like one, but it's teaching uh, social studies and English. And I was like, so you're on the phone. What's that feeling like when you get that call? Is it exciting? Is it terrifying? Are you? Both. Yeah. Like, it's exciting because you're like, oh, like, they liked me. Yeah. Like, obviously, when you get any job offer, you made exciting. some sort of impression. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then it's like, yeah, this is like a subject I don't teach, but it's not, it shouldn't be that hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was, uh, and then I was at the end of the day, like, I told myself I was going to give teaching a shot. So I was like, well, I'll try it. And I'm like, I can't really evaluate it too much because I'm teaching English and social studies, mm -hmm. but like I'll be in a classroom again and I can like build some relationships with kids and like yep. see if I can make feel like I make, maybe I'm not making a difference, but so do I feel like I'm yeah. making a difference? Did or? you find it hard to 
build relationships with those junior high kids, especially after like essentially spending five years in a kind of adult professional environment? How like what was that shift like? Even for you, just going from essentially talking to adults and essentially making professional sales most of the time and a very technical job to a more person personable or like just people based relationship building job. Like how is that transition like? Like my sales job was like relationship building. I guess, yeah, that makes sense. It's still um, pretty, like a soft skill that transfers pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. And you have to have like lots of patience when you're a salesperson. So I feel like lots of the skills transfer mm-hmm. um, when you're dealing with like 12 year olds. Mm-hmm. You can have a lot more, um, you can have a lot more patience when things aren't going like the way you think it should because, yeah. or they're not acting the way you think they should because they're 12. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> It's it's harder to understand with adults. They're actually twelve. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. And then yeah, I'm I'm uh I think I'm pretty like I have a child. I'm a child at heart. I would yeah. say so. Like, yeah. I like I built good relationships with them, but them having a supply teacher for two weeks like really made coming into the classroom and establishing like classroom management. So what does classroom management um, kind of mean to you, and how did you establish it? Even like I obviously we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> well because you know what i again only technically year two but yeah go on so go further with that oh not actually being so what was life like trying to establish classroom management essentially after two weeks of wild west in those classes definitely would have came in because like I, I got to talk to the teacher who was the like their full-time teacher before mm-hmm. and they had established like a really good routine uh the kids lost that routine obviously but yeah. i came in thinking that they would still have it and that was like problem one so i came in like chill like cool mr wickens yeah and <laughs> when- they <laughs> ate me alive so you- <laughs> yes yeah. um so what do you mean by ate you alive like what just, were kind of the things that were it, it was just talk like talking over me or like things that you wouldn't expect even like grade seven level like just like a lot of like it, it's not like a rude behavior or they're just being they're just dismissive they were they were definitely using class as a social scene yeah so it just became trying some different strategies to see what would work with the class so what strategies did you like, do you remember any like, like things that you would where you ever had a day where okay this week was rough i'll try this next week like was there and, and no worries if you don't but like what were some things that you kind of maybe you felt work that kind of translate into kind of what you still do now um i guess one thing that i kind of like took from the ideas we had like a i don't remember what we called it but it was a cloud i drew on the board Okay. And it was like the sad, basically the sad, I had like the sad cloud and I had a sun beside it. And so if someone did something like good in class or like something kind, I put their name in it and we had like a little reward system for that. (laughs) And then, um, I don't remember what it was. Sad cloud. No, that's incredible. (laughs) We had like these, like, uh, we had these like, uh, physical act, like DPA crate in my class. So there was like deep daily physical activity. So there was like inflatable penguins in there or like, I don't know. There was a couple things the kids really liked. So I think like if you were in the happy thing, you got the like penguin the next day. Okay. But if you like were dis- disrespectful, basically. So if you just did something that you didn't respect me or your other peers, or you like the like last person to do something would go into the sad cloud. And that usually resulted in like them spending like five minutes at lunch with me or just like something small. Yeah. But it was like, basically if they're the last person to screw up, um, your name's in the cloud and you have to do your name. <laughs> and I still use that now. <laughs> I, I don't have a cloud. I don't have a cloud or anything, yeah. but just like to promote students to be on time. It's like a silly thing, but it, like yeah. block four. I'm going to put you in the sad cloud. <laughs> yeah, it's the sad cloud. But uh, no, block four is like, if you're the last, per- if you're late yeah. and you're the last person who is late, you have to put up all the chairs. Oh, so it's like it, okay. it kind of gets like the class to be like competitive and like it, it's I don't know I find it like a team like yeah and well, at the end of the everyone's class, kind of laughing with them it's yeah. not like a pointing and, at them and being like haha but and I don't like occasionally if if it's a certain like some certain students mm-hmm. they will end up putting up all the chairs and I might help them but like most times kids will still put up with their own chairs. So that student ends up putting up like five or six chairs. 
Um, but it's usually like a laughing moment or yeah, whatever yeah. in class. Um, that's almost still even relationship building. Like yeah. you're, yeah, if you have those kids, usually if they're a bit later, they're probably the more disengaged folk anyway, but yeah. Hello again, everyone. Just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to this conversation. And hopefully you enjoyed the conversation just as much as I did. If there are any issues with, with professional conduct and or you would like to share your own story, experience, or something you'd like to contribute to the show, please reach out at lucasrbclark97 at gmail.com or send a direct message on Instagram to at mrclark.afterdark. Hope you enjoyed. Tens of feeling of use. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe. See you next time, unless you're scared.